Greetings, respected guests, and welcome to the Washington Center for the Performing Arts. Today's event is not intended to be partisan in any way. Sponsors for this event include Ole Arts Magazine, Bowser's Books, the Northwest Playwrights Alliance, TC Media, and the Washington Center for the Performing Arts. Over the course of the day, a variety of readers from our local government and community will be reading 30 minutes of materials from the document known as the Mueller Report. Each reader has been asked to present the material without commentary, and transitions between speakers will be very brief. When a reader comes to a section of text that has been redacted, they will indicate so by ringing a bell. We hope you find this information useful and enjoyable. Seder had known Rosoff since approximately 2007, and in 2014 had served as an agent on behalf of Rosoff during Rosoff's purchase of a building in New York City. Sater later con contacted Rosoff and proposed that IC Expert pursue a Trump Tower Moscow project in which L IC Expert would license the name and brand from the Trump Organization, but construct the building on its own. Sater worked on the deal with Rosoff and another employee of IC Expert. Cohen was the only Trump organization representative to negotiate directly with IC Expert or its agents. In approximately September 2017, Cohen obtained approval to negotiate with IC Expert from candidate Trump, who was then president of the Trump organization. Cohen provided updates directly to Trump about the project through 2015 and into 2016, assuring him the project was continuing. Cohen also discussed the Trump Moscow project with Ivanka Trump as to design elements such as possible architects to use for the project and Donald J. Trump Jr. about his experience in Moscow and possible involvement in the project during the fall of 2015. Also during the fall of 2015, Cohen communicated about the Trump Moscow proposal with Georgi Richkaladze, a business executive who previously had been involved in a development deal with the Trump Organization in Butami, Georgia. Cohen stated that he spoke to Richkaladze in part because Richelotzi had pursued business ventures in Moscow, including a licensing deal with the uh, Agalarov-owned Crocus Group. On September 22, 2015, Cohen forwarded a preliminary design study for the Trump Moscow project to Richelotzi, adding, I look forward to your reply about this spectacular project in Moscow. Richlotsky forwarded Cohen's email to an associate and wrote, if we could organize the meeting in New York at the highest level of the Russian government and Mr. Trump, this project would definitely receive the, world, receive the worldwide attention. On September 24, 2015, Richlotsky sent Cohen an attachment that he described as a proposed letter to the mayor of Moscow from Trump Org explaining that we need to send this letter to the mayor of Moscow, paren, second guy in Russia, and paren. He is aware of the potential project and will pledge his support. In a second email to Cohen sent the same day, Richelotsi provided a translation of the letter, which described the Trump Moscow project as a symbol of stronger economic, business, and cultural relationships between New York and Moscow, and therefore United States and the Russian Federation. On September 27, 2015, Richelotsky sent another email to Cohen, proposing that the Trump Organization partner on the Trump Moscow project with Global Development Group LLC, which he described as being controlled by Michael Pasokin, a Russian architect, and Simon Nishiradzi. Cohen told the office that he ultimately declined the proposal and instead continued to work with IC Expert, the company represented by Felix Sater. C. 
Letter of Intent and Contacts to Russian Government, October 2015 through January 2016. I. Trump signs the letter of, in, of intent on behalf of the Trump Organization. Between approximately October 13, 2015 and November 2, 2015, the Trump Organization, through its subsidiary Trump Acquisitions LLC and IC Expert, completed a letter of intent at paren LOI for a Trump Moscow property. The LOI signed by Trump for, for the Trump Organization and Rosoff on behalf of IC Expert was intended to facilitate further discussions in order to attempt to enter into a mutually acceptable agreement related to the Trump-branded project in Moscow. The LOI contemplated a development with residential, hotel, commercial, and office components and called for approximately 250 first-class luxury residential condominiums, as well as one first-class luxury hotel consisting of approximately 15 floors and containing not fewer than 150 hotel rooms. For the residential and commercial portions of the project, the Trump Organization would receive between 1% and 5% of all condominium sales, plus 3% of all rental and other revenue. For the project's hotel portion, the Trump Organization would receive a base fee of 3% of gross operating revenues for the first five years and 4% thereafter, plus a separate uh, incentive fee of 20% of operating profit. Under the LOI, the Trump Organization would also receive a $4 million upfront fee prior to groundbreaking. Under these terms, the Trump Organization stood to earn substantial sums over the lifetime of the project without assuming significant liabilities or financial commitments. On November 3, 2015, the day after the Trump Organization transmitted the LOI, Sater emailed Cohen suggesting that the Trump Moscow project could be used to increase candidate Trump's chances of being elected, writing, Buddy, our boy can become president if the USA and we can engineer it. I will get all of Putin's team to buy into the, in on this. I will manage this process. Michael, Putin gets, a, gets on stage with Donald for a ribbon cutting for Trump Moscow, and Donald owns the Republican nomination, and possibly beats Hillary, and our boy is in. We will manage this process better than anyone. You and I get Donald and Vladimir on a stage together very shortly. That the game changer. Later that day, Sater followed up. Donald doesn't stare down. He negotiates and understands the economic issues. And Putin only wants to deal with a pragmatic leader. And a successful businessman is a good candidate for someone who knows how to negotiate business, politics, whatever it, whatever it all is, the same for someone who knows how to deal. I think I can get Putin to say that at the Trump Moscow press conference, if he says that we, we own this election, America's most difficult adversary agreeing that Donald is a good guy to negotiate. We can own this election. Michael, my next steps are very sensitive with Putin's very, very close people. We can pull this off. Michael, let's go. Two boys from Brooklyn getting a USA president elected. This is really, real. this is good, really good. According to Cohen, he did not consider the political import of the Trump Moscow project to the 2016 US presidential election at, at the time. Cohen also did not recall candidate Trump or anyone affiliated with the Trump campaign discussing the political implications of the Trump Moscow project with him. However, Cohen recalled conversations with Trump in which the candidate suggested that his campaign would be a significant, quote, infomercial, unquote, for Trump branded properties. II. Post LOI contacts with individuals in Russia. 
Given the size of the Trump Moscow project, Sater and Cohen believe the project required approval, whether express or implicit, from the Russian national government, including from the presidential administration of Russia. Sater stated that he therefore began to, con began to contact the Trump Organization. Sater had alluded to the need for governmental approval and his attempts to set up meetings with Russian officials. On October 2nd, 2015, for example, Sater wrote to Cohen that all we need is Putin on board and we are golden, and that a meeting with Putin and top deputy is tentatively set for the 14th of October. This meeting was being coordinated by associates in Russia and that he had no direct interaction with the Russian government. Approximately a month later, after the LOI had been signed, Lana Urshova emailed Ivanka Trump on behalf of Urshova's then-husband, Dmitry Klokov, to offer Klokov's assistance to the Trump campaign. Klokov was at the time Director of External Communications for B PJSC, Federal Grid Company of Unified Energy System, a large Russian electricity transmission company, and had been previously employed as an aside and press secretary to Russia's energy minister. Ivanka Trump forwarded the email to Cohen. He told, he told the office that after receiving this inquiry, he had conducted an internet search for Klokov's name and concluded, incorrectly, that Klokov was a former Olympic weightlifter. Between November 18 and 19, 2015, Klokov and Cohen had at least one telephone call and exchanged several emails. Describing himself in emails to Cohen as a trusted person who could offer the campaign political energy and synergy on a government level, Klokov recommended that Cohen travel to Russia to speak with him and, a, and an unidentified intermedi intermediary. Klokov said that those conversations could facilitate a later meeting in Russia between the candidate and an individual Klokov described as, quote, our person of interest, unquote. In an email to the office, Urchova later identified the person of interest as Russian President Vladimir Putin. In the telephone call and follow-on emails with Klokov, Cohen discussed his desire to use a near-term trip to Russia to do site surveys and talk over the Trump Moscow project with local developers. Cohen registered his willingness also to meet with Klokov and, uh, and the unidentified intermediary, but was emphatic that all meetings in Russia involving him or candidate Trump, including a possible meeting between, the, between candidate Trump and Putin, would need to be in conjunction with the development and an official visit with the Trump Organization receiving a formal invitation to visit. Klokov had written previously that the visit by candidate Trump to Russia was to be informal. Klokov had also previously recommended to Cohen that he separate their negotiations over a possible meeting between Trump and the person of interest from any existing business track, reemphasizing that his outreach was not done on behalf of any business, Klokov added in second, in second email to Cohen that if publicized well, such a meeting could have phenomenal impact in a business dimension and that the person of interest's most important support could have significant ramifications for the level of projects and their capacity. Kolkov concluded by telling Cohen that there was no bigger warranty in any project than the consent of the person of interest. Cohen rejected the proposal, saying that currently our LOI developer is in talks with VP's chief of staff in arranging a formal invite for the two to meet. This email appears to be their final exchange and the investigation did not identify evidence that Cohen brought Klokov's initial offer of assistance to the campaign's attention, or that anyone associated with, Trump, with the Trump Organization or the campaign dealt with Klokov's 
with Klokov at a later date. Cohen explained that he did not pursue the proposed meeting because he was already working on the Moscow project with Sater, who Cohen understood to have his own connections with the Russian government. By late December 2015, however, Cohen was complaining that Sater had not been able to use those connections to set up the promised meeting with Russian government officials. Cohen told Sater that he was, quote, setting up the meeting myself, unquote. With January 11, 2006, on January 11, 2016, Cohen emailed the office of Dmitry Peskov, the Russian government's pre press secretary, indicating that he desired contact with Sergei Ivanov, Putin's chief of staff. Cohen erroneously used the email address, quote, PR Peskova at prpress.gof.ru instead of PR Peskova, Peskova at prpress.gov.ru. So the email apparently did not go through. On January 14, 2016, Cohen emailed a different address, info at prpress.gov.ru with the following message. Dear Mr. Peskov, over the past few months, I have been working with a company based in Russia regarding the development of a Trump Tower Moscow project in Moscow City. Without getting into length lengthy specifics, the communication between our two sides has stalled. As this project is too important, I am hereby requesting your assistance. I respectfully request someone, preferably you, contact me so that I might discuss the specifics as well as arranging a meeting with the appropriate individuals. I thank you in advance for your assistance and look forward to hearing from you soon. Two days later, Cohen sent an email to PR Pesco, Peskova at prpress.gov.ru, repeating his request to speak with Sergei Ivanov. Cohen testified to Congress and initially told the office that he did not recall receiving a response on this email inquiry and that he decided to terminate any further work on the Trump Moscow project as of January 2016. Cohen later admitted that these statements were false. In fact, Cohen had received and recalled receiving a response to his inquiry and he continued to work on, on an update candidate, on and update candidate Trump on the project through as late as June 2016. On January 20th, 2016, Cohen received an email from Alina Polyakova, Peskov's personal assistant. Writing from her personal email account, Polyakova stated that she had been trying to reach Cohen and asked that he call her on the personal number that she provided. Shortly after receiving Polyakova's email, Cohen called and spoke to her for 20 minutes. Cohen described to Polakova that his position at the Trump Organization and outlined the proposed Trump Moscow project, including information about the Russian counterparty with which the Trump Organization had partnered. Cohen requested assistance in moving the project forward, both in securing land to build the project and with financing. According to Cohen, Polyakova asked detailed questions and took notes, stating that she would need to follow up with others in Russia. Cohen could not recall any direct follow-up from Polyakova or from any other representative of the Russian government, nor did the office identify any evidence of direct follow-up. However, the day after Cohen's call with Polyakova, Sater texted Cohen asking him to call me when you have a few minutes to chat. It's about Putin, they called today. Sater then sent a draft invitation for Cohen to visit Moscow to discuss the Trump Moscow project, along with a note 
to tell me if the letter is good as amended by me or make whatever changes you want and send it back to me. After a further round of edits on July 25, 2016, Sater sent Cohen an invitation signed by Andre Ryabinsky of the company MHJ to travel to Moscow for a working visit about the prospects of development of the construction business in Russia, the various land plots available suited for construction of this enormous tower, and the opportunity to co-coordinate a follow-up visit to Moscow by Mr. Donald Trump. According to Cohen, he elected not to travel at the time because of concerns about the lack of concrete proposals about land plots that could be considered as options for the project. D. Discussions about Russia travel by Michael Cohen or candidate Trump, December 2015 to June 2016. I. Sater's overtures to Cohen to travel to Russia. The late January communication was neither the first nor the last time that Cohen contemplated visiting Russia in pursuit of the Trump Moscow project. Beginning in late 2015, Sater repeatedly tried to arrange for Cohen and candidate Trump as representatives of the Trump organization to travel to Russia to meet with Russian government officials and possible financing partners. In December 2015, Sater sent Cohen a number of emails about logistics for traveling to Russia for meetings. On December 19, 2015, Sater wrote, Please call me. I have Ivenshi Devoskin on the other line. He needs a copy of your and Donald's passports. They need a scan of every page of the passports. Invitations and visas will be issued this week by VIB Bank to discuss financing for Trump Tower Moscow. Politically, neither Putin's office nor Ministry of Foreign Affairs cannot issue invites, so they are inviting commercially business. VTB is Russia's two biggest bank, and VTB Bank CEO and Andre Kostin will be at all meetings with Putin so that it is a business meeting, not political. We will be invited to Russian consulate this week to receive invite and have visa issued. In response, Cohen texted Sater an image of his own passport. Cohen told the office that at one point he requested a copy of candidate Trump's passport from Rona Graf, Trump's executive assistant at the Trump Organization, and that Graf later brought Trump's passport to Cohen's office. The investigation did not, however, establish that the passport was forwarded to Sater. Into the, t into the spring of 2016, Sater and Cohen continued to discuss a trip to Moscow in connection with the Trump Moscow project. On April 20, 2016, Sater wrote Cohen, the people wanted, you, wanted to know when you are coming. On May 4, 2016, Sater followed up. I had a chat with Moscow. Assuming the trip does happen, the question is before or after the convention. I said I believe, but don't know for sure, that it's probably after the convention. Obviously, the pre-meeting trip, you only, can happen anytime you want, but the two big guys were the question. I said I would confirm and revert. Let me know about if I was right by saying I believe after Cleveland and also when you want to speak to them and possibly fly over. Cohen responded, my trip before Cleveland, Trump once he becomes the nominee after the convention. The day after this exchange, Sater tied Cohen's travel to Russia to the St. Petersburg, Petersburg International Economic Forum, an annual event attended by prominent Russian politicians and businessmen. Sater told the office that he was informed by a business associate that Peskov wanted to invite Cohen to the forum. 
On May 5, 2016, Seder wrote to Cohen, Peskov would like to invite you as his guest to the St. Peter Petersburg Forum, which is Russia's Davos. It's June 16 through 19. He wants to meet there with you and possibly introduce you to either Putin or Medved Medvedev, as they are not sure if, if one or both will be there. This is perfect. The entire business class of Russia will be there as well. He said anything you want to discuss, including dates and subjects, are on the table to discuss. The following day, Sater asked Cohen to confirm those dates would work for him to travel. Cohen wrote back, works for me. On June 9, 2016, Sater sent Cohen a notice that he, Sater, was completing the badges for the forum, adding, Putin is there on the 17th. Very strong chance you will meet him as well. On June 13, 2016, Sater for forwarded Cohen an invitation to the forum signed by the director of Roscongress Foundation, the Russian entity organizing the forum. Sater also sent Cohen a Russian visa application and asked him to send two passport photos. According to Cohen, the invitation gave no indication that Peskov had been involved in inviting him. Cohen was concerned that Russian officials were not actually involved or were not interested in meeting with him, as Sater had alleged, and so he decided not to go to the forum. On June 14, 2016, Cohen met Sater in the lobby of the Trump Tower in New York and informed him that he would not be traveling at that time. I.I. Candidate Trump's opportunities to travel to Russia. The investigation identified evidence that during the period that Trump Moscow project was under consideration, the possibility of candidate Trump visiting Russia arose in two contexts. First, in interviews with the office, Cohen stated that he discussed the subject of traveling to Russia with Trump twice, once in late 2015 and again in spring 2016. According to Cohen, Trump indicated a willingness to travel if it would assist the project significantly. On one occasion, Trump told Cohen to speak with then campaign manager Corey Lelowski to coordinate the, camp, the, the candidate's schedule. Cohen recalled that he spoke with Lewandowski, who suggested that they speak again when Cohen had actual dates to evaluate. Cohen indicated, however, that he knew that travel prior to the Republican National Convention would be impossible given the candidate's pre-existing commitments to the campaign. Second, like Cohen, Trump received and turned down an invitation to the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. In late December 2015, Myra Duma, a contact of Ivana Trump's from the fashion industry, first passed along invitations for Ivana Trump and candidate Trump from Sergei Prigodko, a deputy prime minister of the Russian Federation. On January 14, 2016, Rona Graf sent an email to Duma stating that Trump was, quote, honored to be asked to participate in the highly prestigious, unquote, forum event, but that he would have to decline the invitation given his very grueling and full travel schedule as a presidential candidate. Graf asked Duma whether she recommended that Graf send a formal note to the deputy prime minister declining his invitation. Duma replied that a formal note would be great. It does not appear that Graf prepared that note immediately. According to written answers from President Trump, Graf received an email from Deputy Prime Minister Prihodko on March 17, 2016, again inviting Trump to participate in the 2016 forum in St. Petersburg. Two weeks later, on March 31, 2016, Graf prepared Trump's signature for a two, signature a two-paragraph letter declining the invitation. 
The letter stated that Trump's schedule has become extremely demanding because of the presidential campaign, and he, al and he already had several commitments in the United States for the time of the forum, but that he otherwise would have gladly given every consideration to attending such an important event. Graff forwarded the letter to another executive assistant at the Trump Organization with instructions to print the document on letterhead for Trump to sign. At approximately the same time that the letter was being prepared, Robert Forsman, a New York-based investment banker, began reaching out to Graff to secure an in-person meeting with candidate Trump. According to Forsman, he had been asked by Anton Kobioskov a Russian presidential aide involved in the Reconquest uh, Foundation to see if Trump could speak at the forum. Forsman first emailed Graf on March 31, 2016, following a phone introduction brokered through Trump business associate Mark Burnett, who produced the television show The Apprentice. In his email, Forsman referenced his long-standing personal and professional expertise in Russia and Ukraine his work setting up an early private channel between Vladimir Putin and former U.S. President George W. Bush, and an approach he had received from senior Kremlin officials about the candidate. Forsman asked Graf for a meeting with the candidate, Corey Lewandowski, or another relevant person, to discuss this and other concrete things. Forsman felt uncomfortable discussing over unsecure email. On April 4th, 2016, Graf forwarded Forsman's meeting request to Jessica Machia, another executive assistant to Trump. <laughs> 